There are plenty of different rivers on planet Earth with different widths and lengths. Right now, the biggest river in the world is the Amazon River, which is about 6,500 kilometers long. In sections that have a lot of water flow, 219,000 cubic meters of water are moving per second, and that's insane. When you compare this absurd amount of water to ocean currents, it's kind of funny because they blow these things out of the park. We've said plenty of time that planet Earth is a living thing. Ever since it was born, it has always been changing. You really couldn't find an era where the planet didn't go through change. We are saying all of this to get to a certain point, the point of the ocean currents everywhere in the world. The map you're seeing is the current ocean currents all around the world. And some of them are hot, some of them are cold. You might say, who cares where water flows? It just goes everywhere and it doesn't affect anything. This is basically water flowing within the ocean, exactly like an underwater river. There is another name for these underwater rivers or currents, conveyor belts. And this is exactly what we are talking about. A lot of people don't know how important these ocean conveyor belts are. But it's good to know that it's one of the most important things for the ecosystem of planet Earth. And this is what determines everywhere's weather. The ocean currents you're seeing pretty much control the weather in that area, kind of like a thermostat. Have you ever seen how a water AC works? It takes cold water from the bottom, puts it on top of the shroud, and then hot air blows through it, hits the water and cools off the room. These ocean currents do exactly that. They move cold water in cold sections and go to the hot sections and vice versa. So basically the difference of temperature is mostly moving this water around. While they're doing that in the oceans, they are causing a huge effect in the environment. Like for example, if you look at the west coast of the US, the California current. There is a cold current coming from the north. And if this wasn't here, the weather of California and West Mexico would be similar to the Sahara. San Francisco has always good weather. And in the winter, it doesn't get too cold. The cool weather is because of this ocean current coming from the north. And if it wasn't here, San Francisco would be hot as hell. There are a lot of currents around the world, but there are important ones. Like for example, the current that has the biggest effect in the ecosystem is the Gulf Stream current. This is a ginormous river that starts in the Gulf of Mexico and goes all the way to Northern Europe. But before we talk about the Gulf Stream, let's see how these currents are created and why they are created. Is it the wind that moves this water? The wind has a lot of power, but it's not the wind that creates these ocean currents. It's the density of the water that does the important thing. When water gets warmer or hotter, the density of it drops, so it likes to rise up. And that is why warmer water sits on top. And you could say that about cold water, which is the opposite. It gets more dense, so it goes to the bottom. The salt percentage of the water has a lot to do with the density as well. Like for example, near the equator, since it's warmer, the salt levels are much higher because more water is being evaporated. And that's all because the more salt it is in this part of the sea, the more dense it is. So when you have all these types of densities and salt water, these alone will create currents. You can kind of compare it to how wind is formed. When you have hot air and cold air, and the hot air does not want to stay down and it rises, something has to replace it. And that something is cold air. And that's exactly what wind is. It's replacing the hot air that goes up. 
Long story short, this is how these currents work. But let's go talk about the most important stream or current in the whole world, the Gulf Stream. This current has a length of more than 10,000 kilometers and it has the most pressure, so it's the fastest as well. You guys remember the Amazon. 219,000 cubic meters of water was moving per second. But the Gulf Stream laughs at this figure because in the Gulf Stream, more than 100 million cubic meters of water is flowing per second. So how is this stream formed? It all starts in the equator west of Africa and it's pushing warm water towards the Gulf of Mexico, like this. When it reaches the Gulf of Mexico, the water has a temperature of 30 degrees centigrade. And then after entering, it leaves from the bottom of Florida. So it basically does a lap in the Gulf, gets power, and shoots out. The Gulf Stream doesn't put a huge effect on the east coast of the United States and heads towards Europe. When it reaches Europe, it turns into three different branches. The first one goes southwards towards Africa. The middle one goes towards Northern Europe like Norway and the UK. And the third and the most important one goes towards Iceland and Greenland. When this current passes through the Strait of Denmark, meaning right here, this is when the real stuff happens because this is where the biggest waterfall is. But this waterfall isn't the one you could see like the Niagara Falls because the fall is underwater. When the water passes through the strait, it immediately loses its temperature. And when you get colder, you want to drop lower all of a sudden because colder water has higher density. So when you put all this together, that's how you create this giant waterfall. This water is such a giant that if you could see it, your mind would be blown. Just imagine a waterfall that's 15 kilometers wide and 4,000 meters long. Every second, more than 17 million cubic meters of water is falling down. This is an insane amount of water because if you want to compare it, this is how you do it. You put all the rivers of the world together and that would be 1 15th of this much water. When you put a hose and siphon it with your mouth and you put it downwards, that fuel is gonna keep coming out. This is how this waterfall works as well. Since it goes downhill all of a sudden, it creates a huge pull. So it keeps pulling the water towards itself. And that's what creates this current. You could kind of compare this waterfall to a pump, the most powerful water pump in the whole world. This current is the most important stream for the weather of Europe because not only is it bringing warm water towards Europe, it's also bringing warm air. So without this, Europe is supposed to be a freezing cold place that you can't do anything, let alone live there. But with the help of the Gulf Stream, it's actually a very beautiful place that's livable. But if you eliminate the Gulf Stream, north all the way to South Europe, it's gonna turn into somewhere very cold and dry kind of like Antarctica. Europeans have another name for the Gulf Stream. It's very simple, heater, because it's literally the heater of the continent of Europe. You might say, how come the Gulf Stream doesn't warm up the east coast of the United States? That's because another current that's cold comes southbound towards the east coast, called the Labrador. And if this wasn't here, the Gulf Stream would probably warm up the east coast of the US by a lot. And I don't know if that would be a good thing or a bad thing because recently the summer have been very hot in New York. Scientists say if ice continues to melt in the northern hemisphere like Greenland and the North Pole, these ocean currents could be at risk and Gulf Stream could be extremely slowed down. This would cause the North Pole to get warmer, but in return, Europe would get extremely colder. And that basically means you're turning down the thermostat for Europe. 
Scientists aren't just pulling that out of their bottom. They're saying this because of the history of the planet, because it has always been going through changes. And of course, it has always gotten warmer and cooler that created these different currents. There is a lot of talk on how humans are affecting climate change or if they're doing anything to make it go higher. But we don't know anything yet. It's mostly theories. There are of course a lot of currents around the world, but we talked about the most important one. The Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean have plenty of these currents and they create the weather of these continents. In this video, you could see the different currents all around the world and how they are connected. <laughs> 